after Bombay, you went back to Kerala and you started your biennial and Kochi was re biennial and then foundation, yeah. and then museum, and then some more uh, advanced things uh, for teaching students. Yeah, students why, why, what this all was? See, and why, what CSS, inspired you CSS. to go back and when you could have done something and you started there, what inspired you and no, see, why you started this one? See, as a person, I was always uh, interested in doing projects of, uh, you know, a larger scale. But this was an invitation, you know, from the government of Kerala to do an art project. So that's in the conversation with the, the education minister and the culture minister, I may be happy that, uh, you know, he asked, I mean, you know, what is something with that which you can do to revive the visual art uh, forms in Kerala. So that's when I proposed, you know, a Kochi biennial would be a great idea because Kerala is anywhere place that will have a greater, you know, cultural relationship with the larger world. It's been a site where you know, we've engaged with the larger globe, you know, globally, you know, uh, through our trade relationship, through exchange of, uh, you know, uh, you know, cultures and ideas. See, Kerala is a place that where you have the oldest synagogue. In Kerala is a place that where you have the oldest mosque in, in our country. You know, you see the oldest churches. Uh, and so it's also a kind of site where multiculturalism flourish. You know, the knowledge is being like a part of the backbone of that state. So it, and it has a very strong interest in art and culture. So that's when the culture minister of Kerala approaches yeah. us. You know, so then we, you know, uh, decided like, I mean, okay, then, you know, the speed was too much from the part of the government to kind of execute it. So, so 2010 was the initial discussion and, you know, 2010 it started. And then, you know, so to go back to the reason uh, is actually for me personally to kind of give that idea actually emerged in 92 because I was always interested in doing projects that which celebrates community celebrate court systems, celebrate our own larger history of humankind of like you know, travel, trade, exchanges, you know, the maritime legacies, all those kind of things. And Kochi is a great site for that. I mean, 600 years of you know, maritime history makes Kochi port. And also Mozaris, uh, uh, more than 2,000 year old uh, you know, ancient port city, also comes into you know, the act. So, what was happening in Kochi was almost like a kind of a, you know, a cultural acupuncture, much needed, you know, that, I mean, you find a site, you know, at the time of conflicts, that, I mean, you find a site where there are 40 different communities living together in three kilometers square, and you speak of art, which is also, you know, in, in a contemporary context, it's new. I mean, the ideas of installation, video, you know, video projections, new media art which is all new to you know communities so and in a post-independent India we never had international art projects where we could dictate our terms that I mean we could bring in we could curate you know we could invite yeah we could yeah we could invite like I mean European artists we could invite African artists we could invite artists from all across the world host them help them to produce bring you know cultural community together find money for it you know see it is I mean for me it was very exciting to give uh, you know, a grant, a production grant to an American artist, you know, to come and produce a work in Kochi. Because we've always been kind of on the other side of, you know, uh, culturally, like, I mean, we go for a, you know, the acknowledgement of the West. But here, Kochi started doing something completely different, that where you take the, you know, stand to curate, to produce art, make you know, interesting art projects on site, perishable works. You know, you after the exhibition, you just you know dismiss the work. You protect. You know, you, you preserve. You, you you know you engage in the conversation. You do installations. No, no, see, art making. You know, most of the. No, why I said it because you no, know, the reason I said that. I mean, we also produced work which was perishable because we always had an idea about art is like Raja Ravi work, or okay that we have an MFS. So these are the the community's engagement with art as a knowledge. But here, 
what happened in Kochi that we had a Raul Zurita, a poet coming from Chile and creating an installation which laments on Syrian crisis. Okay. It's an installation work that we could walk into, you know, so it's an experiential project. And you know, hundreds of them created in the four you know, different editions which happened. So that's the magic, you know, where art can bring and which people have never experienced because we don't grow up in you know, museums and you know, we, don't, we don't take our children to kind of contemporary art exhibitions. See, in India we have limited resources on that. Very limited. Yeah, so a project like this which runs for four months in a location with temporary gallery spaces which used to be warehouses becomes a temporary museum for a community to kind of engage with. And in the end, when you go deeper into the project as the project starts, the project becomes part of the community. The project becomes the proud pride of community pride of because community. the project celebrates the community's history. You know, so any project which starts celebrating the community, it will slowly grow. You know, so that was you know. So uh, once, uh, uh, can you say that you are uh, once, uh, you have uh, brought some changes as far well as art creation is uh, concerned uh, at the ground level? And you are contented with that? See, uh, the Biennale uh, has brought in a new ecosystem uh, in India. You know, it has uh, allowed uh, many young artists to think bigger. You know, it brought in patronage. You know, so see, for example, even today's project. Why some of the youngsters have excelled in their work? Because they got a grant. A grant is not something which ties you up. It gives you money to produce something which is your creative intent. And you are not showing it in a gallery that where you are also expecting that whether it will get sold. He is showing his work with 100% freedom. So Biennale is also like that. Biennale is a non-commercial project. So the idea of like, I mean, producing art for without commercial intent was exemplified or activated or you know like I mean, shared with the community, shared with the patrons, shared with artists uh, and shared with collectors, shared with galleries, okay. museums through the process of vinyl making because you spend two years with the curator and you engage with artists, you select them, you travel, research and put together a project under a certain idea. So that there is a two year long preparation, it's almost like preparing for an Olympics, you know, so and you bring in talents to, to one location, so it's... Yeah. So, uh, well, uh, with your Kochi Industries Foundation, yeah. you have started uh, courses for children, then for youth, I don't know, means for young girls also is yeah. there or not, yeah. might be, I'm sure might be. Uh, so, uh, how does that is uh, encouraging the local people? Because you behind idea behind that, as you said, it's encouraging locals through their local stories. So, how much? Uh, it's not just the local story. I mean, you know, the, the story which the locals have. The have local ecosystem. No, no, the story which the locals have to say. The community has to say is a very global story. Global. That's I hundred yeah, percent. That, that is hundred percent. That is the fascinating yeah. one. One devastation mm -hmm. uh, story looks like local, but it's global. Yeah. See, that is see. So that is somewhere. I mean, if you look at the idea of building universities, for example, the idea of Shantaniketan. Mm -hmm. What was it? I mean, it was also a site for a global discourse. That's right. yeah, so we were, as a generation, as knowledge producers, we were very much interested in that. So whenever you make a larger project, it was important for us to make it educational. So that's why, like, I mean, when we are bringing 100 masters or, you know, out of, you know, 100 artists, like, I mean, we have around at least 25 major artists like I'm mean, showing in Kochi, we wanted to benefit, we wanted the project to be beneficial also for the young aspiring artists. So that's why we started a student's biennial. A student's biennial which started with uh, art institutions in India now is a project that where the artists from the subcontinent shows, the artists from Nepal, you know the young 
our students are showing in Kochi. Because they, if you travel, because I have done research in like Nepal, in you know, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Myanmar, and all those places. When you go deeper and deeper in our neighborhood, they look up to us. India is their site of aspiration. You know? So when they have a major exhibition to show in India, I mean, you know, they are so, you know, you know, like a bit obliged. No, obliged. They feel obliged. Know, okay, yeah. So and then, you know, from that direction that, I mean, you create this particular location for a little bit more of a kind of micro-analysis. I mean, how art can also influence the new education system. So that's how we started so, man, Art by Children. Are looking, how you are looking and so, uh, in your dreams, you are this foundation so, in the future. See, this is, see, for example, like, I mean, if you really look at Art by Children as a project, it has uh, started with the idea of children's binary. Then we changed it into Art by Children, and it is called ABC. And it, uh, it carries that, you know, emblematic, you know, symbolism in it that, I mean, it is, for any children, teaching art can transform. It's, you know, it's almost like going back to Gandhi's Naitali. That's right. You know, Gandhi had an idea of Naitali, which is... Pri primarily an idea like this to understand the community, understand living, you know, understand the geography where you live in, uh, understand you know the other. So I have a feel that projects like this, not just in Kochi, even it can also happen in like I mean, other because India is a huge country. It can happen, and we should have projects like this which celebrates the spirit of different different kinds of communities. communities. Yeah. So I mean, I'm 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 for that. I mean, and I'll. You know, I'll be, you know, dedicating my time, you know, to kind of create. So even for a project like Vainda is this Art for Hope. The most fascinating thing about this project is that it actually brings together very multidisciplinary practice under one roof. They are supporting all kinds of artists. You know, they are not just supporting like I mean, modern art. They are also supporting a Manganiyar musician whose, you know, tradition is like, I mean, you know, they are struggling to kind of, you know, sustain. Yes, to survive. Yes. So, that's what India is all about. Yes. Now, now we come to the third aspect of the art. It's very difficult to sell. Uh, so, what you think about, and uh, I would like to know once when NFT kind of things are there now, is it, uh, it has become easier? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm still uh, not uh, an expert to speak about NFT because NFT is a new form of, uh, you know, transaction which is uh, evolving also. You know, I mean, the ideas of like, I mean, you know, this metaverse and all those, and all those things coming up. Uh, it definitely is going to change the way we conceive and perceive you know, art and you know, uh, it also going to question the custodianship of art and you know, all those kind of transformations are happening. But uh, selling art is always difficult because it's, uh, you have to be, you know, one is that I mean, your art has to have strong relevance. Uh, you have to be you know, very talented, conceptually very strong, and uh, uh, you know you are not somebody you are making art and sitting and selling. You know, so you have to work with sometimes an institution, a gallery, or you have to adopt certain systems that come I in where you have some, you know, uh, larger bodies that come I in mean, that which is helping. Art. But in India, the route most of the artists have is that I mean you know you produce work, you exhibit in a gallery. You know, some collectors come and buy, and that is the system which we are still following. That's one reason even the project like the Dhaiwadai's Art gets attention because we have to adopt this kind of system to survive. You know, so then a youngster shows a work in a place like this and it gets noticed by a gallery, he gets paid by the system. But, uh, well, when sir, so we go more, more and more puppets except it comes it ahead. It is but coming. is your foundation also have thought something means how to... No, no, those kind of things, those kind of practices are on and because on the, the art institutions are anyway supporting, they come in, you know, it's made to support art. It's, it's helping to kind of produce art. But see, in 2010, India government took a very strong decision to make art under CSR. 
so the hyundai is uh, you know these kind of projects is emerging in india because earlier you know corporate social responsibility was to kind of help cancer patients or you know like uh, you know for to the extent it went to women empowerment then it went to craft to some extent then it went to like i mean some indigenous uh, recently so contemporary art photography and everything can be supported through for, for you know corporate social responsibility fund mm-hmm. you know so that that is a big benefit so institutions museums will emerge uh, because many of the corporates can also make their own foundations to kind of you know support certain kind of our practices i think i'm i'm very much sure that it is going to grow bigger and bigger in especially in a country like india because see see remember uh, how technologically also we are improving you see when we earlier when we used to buy an ambassador car and we used to take the ambassador car first in the garage to do so remember when we used to buy an ambassador car and we used to take, buy it and first you take it to a garage to do welding spotting and you know correction and all this and then when 86 and maruti 800k Mm-hmm. You know, that we became like revolutionized because you know you could buy a car and drive. You know you don't have to take it even to the garage. That's you know, right. Because you you revive technology. Exactly. You know with Japanese help. Now then see today. I mean I was looking at and thinking like I mean eight ninety eight. Sandro came to India. That queen died. You remember that Shahrukh Khan ads and all. Yes. I mean, that spinning. And That's right. Then Shandro came with Zing. So, so the idea of like, I mean, you know, speed and you know, technology. You know, so then we we started seeing that automobile became a measure which we see of our development. Development. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So even today, you know, uh, you know, some of the major automobile players supporting modern culture because they have to travel along with you know culture. to also see their presence more credible so i'm sure you know an organization like find i can do that you know by engaging very strongly I'm with C- csr uh, decision of the government is uh, very beneficial yeah i i i I'm, I'm, i hope i hope they do that and uh, you know i congratulate them for doing this thank you thank you so thank much thank you so much yeah. thank you thanks a lot yeah. to, uh,